So today here in California, the mask, indoor mask mandate for public areas or public indoor areas in places has been reinstituted. And what that means is that at least until January 15th, everybody has to wear a mask, even if you're fully vaccinated and even fully boosted, you have to wear a mask indoors. And we're not the only ones. Uh, New York is doing it, and I'm sure other states across the country are doing it as well. But the question obviously is, why? You know, why are suddenly these mask mandates coming around? What, what's going on here? Now, yesterday I said in my video that basically, you know, in the long run, when you really think about it, it's all about scaring, scaring and putting fear and intimidation into those that have chosen not to get the vaccination yet or those that are fully vaccinated who choose not to get the booster. It's just, you know, uh, uh, basically a publicity stunt by the media, by the CDC, by the local and state governments to intimidate, fear, and scare those people into getting the booster, into getting the vaccinations and, and all that. And it's mostly due to the fact that, like I said in that video, that when you look at the U.S. as a whole, our reputation historically is we're the be-all, end-all uh, of countries around the world. Like, we're the be-all, end-all of greener pastures, of more freedom, stuff like that. You know, we're the number one place to be. And basically, by having that reputation, historically, you know, a lot of governments, state and federal-wise, you know, health, and a lot of health departments, state and, you know, federal-wise, you know, will take that, you know, as, you know, motivation to try to get ahead of this whole situation with the COVID. And if they have to basically implement, you know, month-long or two-week-long or three-week-long uh, mandates for indoors and everything, especially during the holidays, they will do it just so they can prove, hey, U.S. number one kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a bad thing, honestly. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it is, but that's mainly when you think about it, the reason a lot of this is happening. But when you look at states like California and New York and other places that are implementing these months long or le at least two week long, three week long ma indoor mask mandates, uh, for the time being, you know, when you look at these states and you wonder why they're doing this when, you know, the vaccination rate is up more so than the new cases of COVID, it's all because of one reason. It's all being done because of one reason, and that's PR, public relations. And what that means is by making this as a, making this a PR decision, they're making their governor who runs their state look good in the eyes of the public, in the eyes of the country and the world. In the case here in California, it's Gavin Newsom. In the case of New York, it's that one lady, I can't think of her name right now, who's also a Democrat. So in other words, any democratically uh, run state, um, if you will, any democratically run state, governor-wise, that's implementing these kind of things, either month long or a few weeks long, are doing it because of the PR. It's all because of the fact that they want to make their governors look good so that when their uh, potential re-election opportunities come up next year, people will, in their point of, from their point of view, will re-elect them to, run again, to remain their governor, if you know what I mean. And that's what it really is in the long run. It's a PR move to try to get enough backing for the governor of that state, Republican or Democrat wise, to, you know, get a chance of being reelected into that position for another couple of years. Some others, though, when some others, though, will look at this not just as a PR move by the states for the governors, but also look at it as a PR move for the governors who potentially are looking at higher pastures, greener, richer pastures, if you know what I mean. I mean, one common thing here in California, whether you're a Democrat or Republican um, party supporter, the one common denominator is the fact that, well, basically, um, everybody, everybody pretty much sees that Newsom, you know, he may not show it right now, but just based off the fact that he's going on a book tour, apparently, you know, the way he speaks sometimes, especially with these kind of things, that it's just obvious to them that this is a PR move, not just to, you know, encourage people to reelect him as governor of the state, 
but to also encourage people to support him for a potential presidential um, campaign run in 20, for 2024. That's what it is. The same thing with the lady in New York. You know, Como may be out of power right now, but this lady, who is like his second in command, you know, you don't tell me she doesn't have the same aspirations. And by having a similar uh, decision made for at least a month or whatever in New York, you can't tell me that's just not a PR move to make her look good in front of people to get her reelected, you know, for another term as governor. But you also have to admit that it's a PR move to get people to consider, hmm, she might be a good candidate, Democratic-wise, you know, to run for president or even vice president. So there's more to this whole, you know, mask mandate, you know, than what's being let on. Because in reality, it's just PR moves, if you know what I mean, public relation moves, to make the governors of the states they run that are implementing this look good, you know, in the eyes of the public, in the eyes of the media, in the eyes of the country, in the eyes of the world, so that people will back them up for a potential another term as governor and potentially a run at becoming president, if not vice president, in 2024. That's what this really is when you get down to it. That's what really it is. I mean, everything I talked about in the last video yesterday, I stick by. I really do. You know, everything is pretty much too coincidental. It just doesn't make sense, doesn't add up. It's all about intimidation, fear-mongering, scaring. And this is coming from somebody that by their own choice, along with his mom, you know, by their own choice, along with his mom and his older sister, have gotten their Mandura vaccines twice and are on the verge of getting the booster. So this is coming from somebody that's been there and done that. You know, been there and done that. Um, anyway, though, long story short, that's what this really is when you get down to it. It's a, it's a PR move. And I think anybody that's fully vaccinated, fully boosted, you name it, you know, that's what it is. It is basically a PR move to help make the governors of each of these states that are doing this, even for a few weeks, a month, or whatever, to make them look good. And it's not just them either. It's the counties in those states. Sometimes the counties, some counties may not be for it and say, hey, screw you, we're going to let people have a choice. And the counties that are for it, their mayors or the county leaders, it makes them look good so they can have potential runs at the state senate or, you know, federal senate or house or whatever as well as a potential run at the government ship. That's, and that's all these really are. That's all these really are when you get down to it. And again, this is coming from somebody that had twice of the Mandura shot and is going to get his booster you know, on Monday along with his flu shot. So, yeah, basically it's just, you know, one of those situations to where um, it's, just, it's just basically a, just another attempt just another poor excuse and attempt to make the governors look good. And, and that's what it is. And that, that's pretty much all I can say. It's a PR move, guys. It's not just, you know, a way to intimidate and fear people and all that. It's a PR move. We all know that. But what are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments as well as in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video. Comment. Uh, then I come, but check out the Teespring store, especially during Christmas time. Really appreciate your support there. Also, check me out at BW Rose's Discussions, all your favorite audio podcast locations except for Pandora. And if you're listening to the podcast on Anchor.fm, listener support has been enabled, so you can help support me there. As well as I am close to 300 podcasts, so get ready for that. And if you're watching the po- if you're listening and watching the podcast on various podcast affiliates like Spotify and all that, uh, video podcasting has also been enabled. I do have a video version of my latest topics on my, my live stream podcast which also you can get an audio up and running on places like Spotify and Amazon and all that. Um, also, check me out at BW Roses on Vimo for content you can't get it here on YouTube due to copyright. Also, check me out at patreon.com slash BW Roses, the $1, $3 tier for support there. And check me out at Venmo at brian walmer 2 to help support me there. But what are your thoughts overall? Do you think it is a PR move? You know, in the grand scheme of things? How do you feel about all this? Let me know down below in the live chat during the premiere. I am out.